Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. A couple quick notes. Going to do a story today in just a second. That was suggested by Tim out of Bloomberg News. But I will tell you that I mentioned briefly at the end of yesterday's video, I've got a problem with my eye. So I backed the camera up a little bit. I hope it doesn't bother you too much. It does not hurt. But I'm apparently suffering from what's called a subconjunctival hemorrhage. <laughs> Which sounds bad, but it's not. <laughs> so, I'll live. Florida Bar says, ticket app, practice law without a license. Yes, it's possible that you downloaded an app on your phone and that app practice law without a license. Again, from Bloomberg, thanks, Tim, for the story. Uh, the app is designed to help you fight a traffic ticket, and drivers just had to upload photos of their tickets, pay a flat fee, and then the app would find an attorney to take your case to court, and then the traffic fines could be reduced or dismissed if the app did its job. But the startup who launched the app have run into a snag because attorneys have complained to the Florida Bar Association that the app, which is called TIKD, Ticketed, and its founder were practicing law without a license. Now, the Florida Supreme Court is going to take a look at this and decide whether or not Ticket poses a legal risk to its customers or merely represents the evolution of legal technology. Uh, and on March 4th, uh, the oral arguments were scheduled. So while other apps have offered similar services, Ticket is currently unavailable to drivers in Florida or elsewhere. So it's temporarily paused as traffic ticket service pending the outcome of the arguments before the Supreme Court, the founder said in an email. A state circuit judge appointed by the state's highest court to be a referee in the case has recommended dismissing the claim because... And this is what uh, the judge there said. The fact that the app, rather than the customer, pays the attorney does not convert the services into the practice of law. It is permissible for a third party to pay an attorney on behalf of a client if the relationship is disclosed. And so, you know, here's the point is that the app was finding people attorneys, not doing the legal work itself. So the founder of the company, said the company anticipates the state Supreme Court will uphold the findings of the referee, and we look forward to bringing the app back in a big way shortly after. Meanwhile, lawyers with the Ticket Clinic, a Miami-based law firm specializing in traffic citations, first filed their complaint in 2017. The firm argued that the app had an unfair competitive advantage over members of the bar because its advertising and operations were not governed by bar rules. And that's an interesting angle because lawyers are required to conform their advertising to a bunch of very, very strict rules. Some might not seem so terribly strict, but they're rules nonetheless. You might notice at the end of every single video of mine, I've got a big old page that says, here's where I'm located, I am an attorney, blah, 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 blah. That's all required by the Michigan State Bar, just so you know. <laughs> Mike Gold, the founder of the Ticket Clinic, compared the app's debut in 2016 to the early days of now ubiquitous apps for such companies as Uber and Airbnb, when they promoted their services, even as they repeatedly ran afoul of the law. Uh, but this isn't a ride to the airport. This is a legal issue, he said. Uh, the advertising and online presence for the app aren't all that different from those of the ticket clinic, however, he said. The real problem here is that nobody is regulating them. I have to submit my advertising to the bar, and they have to approve it first, but these guys don't. So... Uh, it's an interesting argument. Now, the app filed a federal antitrust complaint in 2017 in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida, asserting that the bar was conspiring with the ticket clinic to drive the app out of business, but that lawsuit was dismissed last May. Uh, in filings of the Florida Supreme Court, uh, the app compared its contracts with independent law firms to those of a liability insurance carrier that retains and pays attorneys to represent customers who pay premiums. Uh, the app's website, in terms of service, say the company was neither a law firm nor offering legal advice according to screenshots submitted with the court filings. But the website also cautioned drivers that hiring lawyers in their own could be expensive and a hassle. <laughs> the company assured drivers that its data showed that many tickets challenged in court ended up being reduced or dismissed. It offered refunds if drivers received points in their licenses. Traffic tickets for moral hazard violations such as DUI or excessive speeding were not accepted under the app's terms. Since the app handles so many tickets, we know with a pretty high degree of certainty that what is going to happen to a particular type of ticket and therefore how much it's going to cost us. Because our costs are lower than the average fine amount, we're able to cover the cost of the attorney for you, the website said according to court documents. The website content is no longer available, however, because the app had suspended its services. 
And just in case you're curious, in Miami-Dade County in 2018, there were over 430 non-criminal moving violations, such as improper lane changes or running a red light, according to the most recent data available from the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. There were also over 205,000 non-moving infractions, such as improper parking, seat belts, or expired tags. And that's not counting the trillions of violations that they just ignore because people cannot drive in Florida. <laughs> A little bit of hyperbole there, I'm sorry. Uh, the app's business model does not fit the current regulatory framework according to supportive amicus brief filed by Consumers for a Responsive Legal System, which has advocated for online legal referral companies and the Center for Public Interest Law at the University of San Diego School of Law. The bar fears technologies like this will cut into attorneys' bottom lines, the group said, noting that regulators also initially hesitated to accept payment of legal fees by credit card until that innovation became commonplace for other businesses. Barr doesn't comment on pending litigation, the spokesperson Francine Walker said. Meanwhile, the app technology should be encouraged by the bar as a logical extension of access to justice in the modern age, attorneys for the company said. The app was operating the Miami and Tampa metro areas, four Maryland counties, two California counties, and Washington, D.C., when the Florida bar challenged its operations. So, you know, it's interesting because I've seen a variety of apps. I also saw somebody who pitched an app for parking tickets. Much the same way. They just basically said, hey, look, upload your parking ticket here. We'll have people at our end work on it. And, you know, uh, there's always something where they're basically going to say, look, it's going to cost you a little bit less to use us than it would cost you if you let the ticket hit you or if you hired someone else to do the ticket for you. No one ever hires an attorney for a parking ticket. But um, well, obviously, the traffic ticket it makes sense. But the question is, who is handling the, the legal aspect. Is it the app or is it an attorney? Because if it's an actual attorney, then the app should just be promoting itself as more of a referral service or a service that connects people with the providers of the service, which would be legal services. Now, there are rules and regulations in many states that govern how referral services work. And the funny thing is that about once a day, I get an email from somebody who says, Steve, do you want more legal work? I can refer you cases. And it's always some business someplace that says, you know, we'll set up a, a site and we'll troll for work and then we'll send it to attorneys, including you, if you want some of our trolled work. And I say, no, it's okay. <laughs> By the way, trolling <laughs> is not just a verb that describes what the guy under the bridge is doing. Trolling is also something you do from the back of a boat while you're fishing. So it makes sense in that in that setting. So again, uh, the, the legal question arising from the app in Florida is, is the app practicing law without a license? Are the people running it practicing law without a license? Or are they merely hooking up people who need lawyers with lawyers who can do the work for them? So Tim, thanks for the story. I'll follow this story. And if it gets updated, I will let you know. Meanwhile, I've been told my subconjunctival hemorrhage will go away on its own eventually. <laughs> but isn't that true of everything? Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Hold the wheel and drive.